Welcome back to another DIY tutorial. So in today's video, I will be showing you how I recreate this shirt that you see me putting on, okay? The style inspiration is the picture in the middle which I got from the Instagram. So I will be showing you how I draft the pattern, how I cut and how to join it. So if this is something that you are interested in, keep on watching this video to the end. And if you enjoy watching the video, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and don't forget to turn on your post notification so step one is the pattern drafting tutorial and on the screen these are the measurements that you will require to make your shirt okay so let's get started so introduction to the tools that i'm going to be using i have my french curve rulers here my paper scissors i have my marker pen here and my tape rules that i'm going to use to take my measurement and write down my measurement and of course, I have my pattern papers here. I have two papers here, the front and the back. So I'm going to be drafting both the front and the back together, okay? So I'm just pinning this down so that I can be able to work with it easily. So step one, I will be taking down my shirt length, which is 21 inches, okay? So take your measurement from the tip of your shoulder to wherever you want your top to be. And then you're going to mark it, okay? Mine is 21 inches. So I don't know how many inches you want your top to be. So if you like, you can also use the same method to make uh, a dress as well. Okay. So after marking my 21 inches down, I'm going to use my straight ruler and draw, connect this line here. This is the length of my top and also going to serve as my hemming line. So step one, step two is to mark the width of my top which is my round hip circumference divided by four plus one inch, okay? So this is how wide or how baggy I want this top to be. So divide your round hip circumference by four plus one inch allowance to get the width of your top, okay? Take note, this top does not have a shoulder specific. So the width of your, your shirt is going to be the width of your shoulder, okay? So the step three is to mark the neck width. So I use, I made use of three inches here, but I later reduce the width, uh, later increase the width of my shirt because I, when I finished, I noticed that the neck was too short, uh, high, so I reduced it. So my neck depth is 1.5 and then the front neck depth is four inches. I used 3.5, but I later increase it to four inches, okay? So afterward, I'm going to get my French curve ruler and then connect my neckline. If you want your neckline to be exact as the original design, if you're on a small size, use 3.5 inches wide and then 4 inches neck depth. For a bigger size, use 4 inches by 4.5 and so on and so that, okay? So I'll be coming down to this point here. I'm going to mark 1 inch for my shoulder slope, okay? I'm going to mark one inch and then I'll get my straight ruler to connect this to get uh, to create my shoulder slope from the neck width down to the point where I mark that one inch. So from that point where I mark the one inch down, I'm going to be marking, placing my tape from there and I will mark my slip opening of 10 inch. So the more wide, uh, bigger you want your sleeve to be, the, the more numbers you're going to add to your slip opening. So mine is 10 inches. And that is why you saw the volume of that my sleeves. So from the point where I mark the 10 inches, I'm going to mark 0.5 inch inward like so to create a curve from my underarms, okay? So I will be using my free hand to connect this part so that I can get the exact shape that I want to have from this part here. So I'm going to move on to use my uh, marker pen to uh, enlight the, uh, the line so that you can see exactly what I did so this is how it's looking like at the moment okay so now that I have done from this part the next thing I will be adding my sewing allowance I've went as I had to mark the 0 0.5 inch for my shoulder out where to join my shoulder together so the next thing I will be doing now is to add 0 0.5 inch for my neck uh, my back neck uh, line and also from the sleeve opening all round and then from the hemming line I will be marking one inch for my folding allowance okay so i have gone ahead to put uh, mark all my uh, allowance so the next thing i'm going to do now is to 
uh, cut out the back pattern first so i will be cutting out the back pattern first before taking out the front okay so that is what i'm doing here so what i did i fold in that ss from the front because i thought at first i thought i'm going to be adding a sewing allowance for to join my facing for the front but i later went back again to check on the pictures and i realized that oh this picture is there is actually a space of one inch shorter from the center front so that means i don't need to add sewing allowance for the front so the only thing i need i need to sew into my uh, um, uh into my measurement so yes that is what the 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 concept is okay so yeah so right now i have cut out the back or the back and the front so right now i'm going to be laboring this my back pattern okay and this one is going to be my front pattern so right now i'm going to be cutting out the neckline so like i said you don't need to add strain allowance to the front i wanted to i thought it's something i need to add 0 0.5 inch but you don't need to add uh, sewing allowance rather we're going to sew into our measurement okay so by 0 0.5 inch you're going to use 0 0.5 inch to join your facing from your allowance i hope you understand this so the next thing i need to do now is to cut out this this allowance that actually kept initially so that i can add the uh, sewing allowance i just cut it off and before you cut off the neckline please add your sewing allowance so I prefer adding sewing allowance from the pattern first before cutting it to the fabric because sometimes one can be forgetting and if you forgot to add your sewing allowance from the pattern first you may actually forget to add to the fabric okay so add your sewing allowance while you are drafting on the pattern before you transfer it to your fabric okay so next is the fabric introduction the cutting of the fabric and how many yards you will need so on the table here, I have the fabric I'm going to use here. This is linen material. It has a bit kind of shining face. Okay, this is the type kind of linen I use. And then what kind of fabric can you use aside of linen? You can use cotton. You can use lightweight crepe. You can use or uh, try any fabric that you think of. Never can tell it may turn out well. Okay, so how many yards do you need to make the shirt for a small size? You will be needing at least one and a half yard for the small size person for a bigger size i will advise you to go for two yards and then if you're doing it together with short knicker and pants a uh, short knicker and the shirt then go for two and a half yard or three yard okay so with that being said i'm going to start now by placing my pattern on the fabric so that i can start cutting it okay so i've already gone ahead to cut the fabric into pieces so that I can be able to show you guys how I cut it because my table, my cutting table is really small. If I have to place the whole fabric here to cut, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So just for me to show you how I'm cutting it so that you will not get confused. So I went ahead to pieces the fabric to uh, accumulate the size of my pattern. Okay, so yes. I'm starting, I'm cutting now the back pattern first before I will move on to the front pattern. So I hope all this explanation is clear for you to follow. If it's clear, if it's clear for you to follow, please don't forget to give this video, uh, video a thumbs up, okay? And uh, yeah, help me share this video as well. So um, I was trying to cut it, you know, cutting on a, in a curved shape is actually difficult so what i did to get my cuff accurate from the underarm here i have to use my pen to uh, connect this line before i cut it so that is what i did okay so next i will be cutting out the front pattern always keep your sewing allowance okay remember that the front pattern we don't need to add sewing allowance from the center front okay so we are going to be sewing into our measurement okay so to give it exact the um, star inspiration that i got from the instagram if you want to get the original design you don't need to keep allowance to the center front okay so yeah don't forget that don't mistakenly add sewing allowance to the center front
So after cotton does now, I'm going to take up my pattern paper. So the next I will be working with is my sleeve length. I have gone ahead to cut that two pieces for my sleeves. Okay, you need two pieces that will serve as your sleeve. Uh, yeah, so the width I use for my sleeve is 10 inches. I have here 12 inches, but I let her trim it off. And it has to be on fold, okay? So the length is 21 inches. I use exactly my sleeve length here because of that fold on here. Do you see that? If you want to have the same fold, you have to use exactly your sleeve length, okay? So next thing I'm going to do now, I will get my front pieces. I just place my front pieces on top of uh, fabric that already also is on fold, okay? The pieces underneath is on fold, as you can see. So this is going to give me two of my uh, facing that we'll be using on my front pieces, okay? So right now, I'm going to start now by tra tracing it from the neckline, okay? I will cut it from the neckline all the way to the end of my uh, front pieces. Do you understand? So right now, I have my uh, two front uh, facing now so I'll trim it so that I can get the width of my front facing so the facing the width of the facing uh, from the lower part as you can see is about three to three and a half inches so it's not too wide so at this point is your personal preference if you want it to be so wide then you can do more than three or four inches okay all right guys uh, after cutting out my facing okay and also i have gone ahead to prepare the straps that i'm going to use for the center front so now i have here eight pieces of strap and the length of this strap is by 30.5 inches on each of the straps that i have here all right so this is eight pieces of straps so before we are going to go ahead to to join to pin this strap to the facing before we stop stitch okay first thing we need to do here I'm going to open this here so here is the right side of my fabric okay so the one down is the wrong side so here is the right side of my fabric so what I'm going to do from the neckline here okay I'm going to be marking 0 0.5 inch below so this 0 0.5 inch below is going to serve as allowance that I'm going to use to join my neckline, all right? So I have marked 0 0.5 inch below, and I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. You mark 0 0.5 inch below, all right? So now, the next thing I will be doing here, I'm going to be dividing from this point where I mark this 0.5 inch below here to down here so that I can know how I'm going to place my, my strap, okay, so that the distance between each other will be accurate. So, um, I will be mark, uh, measuring from this point here where i mark the 0 0.5 inch i'll be taking the measurement to know how many inches i have here so i have 18.5 inches okay so i'm going to be dividing 18.5 inches by four because our strap is going to be into four okay so i have here um 18 point 18.5 inches divided by 4 so the distance between each strap each line where my strap is going to be placed I will be using 4.625 okay so how do we get the 4.625 um, let me get the other tape so I have this tape here okay so I'm going to be marking from this point here my strap is going to be here okay my strap is going to be here and then i'll be marking 4.625 so this is where it is here this is 4.6 all right that is 4.6 
and i'm also going to place here i will mark 4.6 okay 4.6 on each point all right so this is where one two three four my straps is going to be so so right now i'm going to start now by placing my straps okay i will be pinning my strap to all this point that i have marked okay so under that 4.6 okay i will be marking 0 0.25 like i will be giving a little bit gap like 0 0.25 to place um my strap so like trying to create a space like the same size of my strap that is what i'm trying to do so it's not necessary you can just place your strap direct once if you take that measurement mark those lines then you can just place your strap and pin it now there is a strap that is going to come in here okay there will be a strap that is going to come in here which is after we have done from here you roll this and then there will be a strap that is going to come through this point okay so we are not making use of that for now so this one is the very first one that we're going to start with okay so that we can close the facing before we start joining the shoulder together so that is why we are starting with this one the lower part is going to be when we are already done with the dress that it's time to hem do the hemming so once you've done with the hemming before we're going to attach the the last straps okay so the next thing now i will place my facing after pinning the 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 strap onto my pieces i will place my facing there and start pinning it so the reason why you need to pin so that when you go back to your sewing machine to join it that pin is going to help you stabilize the facing to the main fabric okay so whatever thing i'm doing to this side here i will repeat the same method on the other side of my front pieces okay so i have done that now so these are my two uh, front pieces together now so i will go and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance okay follow those lines like so so i have gone ahead to st uh, stitch it together and also weave the rough edges from my uh, facing I weave a hemming gum into my facing so right now I'm just ironing it down so that I, we can move on to the next step so the next step now is to join the the back and the front from the shoulder so I'll I just place my my back pattern here the right side facing up okay so right now I'm placing my front pieces the right side facing the right side of the back okay so I'm going to arrange it like so so that i can pin the shoulder so that i can go back and join the shoulder so this is the process you're going to do after working on the facing the next step you need to do is to place your front pieces to the back pieces the right side facing each other so i have pinned my shoulder and now i will go back to my sewing machine to join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance so I have done joined my shoulder together and also I have gone ahead to weave the, the rough edges, the seam allowance that I used to join the shoulder together, okay? So the next thing I will be doing now is to take the round neck circumference of my bodies. So I have pinned it down now. This is how you're going to pin it down so that I can get accurate measurements, okay? So I will take the round neck circumference now so that I can be able to know how many inches I will be cutting at my color okay so i will be using a bishop color and um, i will be leaving a link to the tutorial on how you get your bishop color okay so i got 8.5 inches times 2 which is give me 17 inches so this is my bishop color okay so take your random circumference whatever thing it gives you use it to draft your bishop color out okay so the link is going to be on the description box on how you can draft a bishop collar okay so go and watch the video then come back here for the continuation on how you join your bishop collar together okay but if you know how to do that then let's get into the next step so now the next thing i'm going to do now i will be placing my collar to my body so 
the wrong side is facing me okay the wrong side of my body is facing me and then the right side is facing down so i want to have the the finish the the stop stitching uh on the right side of my bodies okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to find the midpoint of my collar so uh once if you find the midpoint of your collar you're going to notch it okay so also do the same thing to the bodies from the back okay so i'm going to find the midpoint of my back pattern here so here is the midpoint so right the for you to get the right uh midpoint you need to join the shoulder to shoulder together so once you've done that then you make a little notch there to show that these are your midpoint so now i'm going to do what i'm going to do now I'm going to place the right side facing the wrong side of my pattern and then i'm going to pin it so this is how you're going to get the your color to be accurate okay once if you find the midpoint then come to the center front and you're going to pin it like this okay pin it like this and then when you do this you're going to um the color is going to go even okay so pin from the center back to the center front and the same thing you're going to do from the center back to the other center front so that the color can go equally okay so you will not have um any uh budge or any gather on your neckline i hope this explanation is clear if this explanation is clear please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you understand what i mean then move ahead but if you do not you can rewatch the video if you get confused and if the video is playing too fast there is option for you to play back on a normal speed okay you can reduce the playback speed to a normal speed so that you can be able to understand what i'm doing okay so just like i said once if you pin from the center back then pin to the center front before you pin the rest of it so if you do that you're going to have your neckline lay down even okay so once i'm done now i will be heading back to my sewing machine to join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance so this is how it's looking like okay so i have gone ahead to join my collar the first step okay this is the first step need to join the first step first before you move on to the second step so the second step now i'm going to stop stitch this collar now okay so i will be stop stitching it to the right side so the the right side of my fabric that is the part where i will be doing my stop stitching okay so push in the seam allowance or the joining allowance or rather the sewing allowance push it in and then i'm going to stop stitches so i've gone ahead to do that and also i added some uh, size tag because this is going to be one of my ready to wear collections so i add a size tag to it so yes so the next thing i will do now is to join my sleeves so these are my sleeve i'm going to spray my bodies like this and then i'm going to place my uh, my pieces the right side facing the right side and then i'm going to join it so guys um i have gone ahead to join my join the sleeve to the bodies okay so i have joined the sleeve to the body and also i was already started pinning the side to join so this is my sleeves so i have pinned my two sleeves together so the next thing i'm going to do now is to pin the side like i pin here the second side okay because i haven't pinned the second side so let me arrange it right side facing the right side okay i'm going to pin from the wrong side so after pinning this i will head back to my sewing machine to start joining it with 0 0.5 inch allowance that i kept while i was drafting pattern before okay so yeah so i will go and join in and then i will be back so guys and um, i have done with everything basically uh 
I stitch in the 0 0.5 inch allowance to create a, a space where my straps, okay, this is my strap that I'm going to face in from the lower part. Already fold in 0 0.5 inch and then I uh, stop stitch on top. And then for my sleeves, I did the same thing. I create elastic uh, channel. I create a space rather where my elastic channel is going to go in. If you notice from the original uh, design, the the sleeve, the, the ribs area has elastic. Okay, so I create a channel for that. So while I was stitching uh, to create my elastic channel, I left a space of one inch here. Did you see that? A space of one inch here where my 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 elastic is going to go in. Okay, the same thing I did to the front. And you know for the front also, there is a space where my strap is going to come out of. So what I'm going to do, I will fix in my elastic and my strap and then I will show you the final look, okay? So this is the final look. So this is my my sleeve so and also i have a uh, stop stitch the part where i pass my elastic channel on so i stop stitch that the same thing here and also i have fixed my strap from the lower parts so you can make a ruche on it if you don't want to you can just leave it it depends how you want to rock your dress okay so we have come to the end of this tutorial i want to say a very big thank you for watching i'm going to try it and put the the fitting on the last video so that you see how it fits on my body um yeah thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day have a good morning good afternoon good evening Wherever you're watching this video from and don't and please don't forget to subscribe if you're yet to do so and like share leave your comment below and uh, yeah see you on my next video bye so this is the final look on the cargo pants and which one do you prefer the short knicker or with the cargo pants so make one for yourself and try it on any either your skirt or your cargo pants or the short pants and let me know please don't forget to share your recreation on the whatsapp group okay i will be waiting to see your recreation i will see you on my next video